am delighted to see you all. I look forward to CPAC every single year. Seeing friends, being with happy warriors and fellow conservatives, I absolutely love it. This year is no different, but I'm going to tell you something that is different this year. And it's not just that we're all wearing masks and we have COVID-19 compliments of China. It is that we have a bunch of radical liberals in the White House, the House and the Senate, and they are determined to radically change this country. And it is very evident in the area of free speech. They are determined to take away your free speech and the First Amendment. Now, here is what the First Amendment actually says. Congress shall make no law. That is an order, shall. They can't do it. They cannot make a law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for the redress of grievances. First Amendment, most important amendment, if they take that one away, you can be certain they are going to come for your Second Amendment rights. And they're going to go right on down the line. This is the core of the cancel culture. Quite frankly, they want to shut you up, take away your ability to talk to others, and cancel you. Now, I bet if I ask for a show of hands, how many of you have lived with being blocked or shadow banned or throttled or censored? I see a lot of hands going up. You know, we all lived through it in this election, didn't we? I've been through it too, but nobody has been hit by this like President Donald Trump. First, they decided they were going to fact check him, the leader of the free world, and then they were going to block him, send a message, and then they were going to temporarily ban him, then they were going to permanently ban him from Facebook and Twitter, the leader of the free world. But if you go on Twitter today, the supreme leader of Iran, Xi Jinping from China, Putin, and other despotic leaders, they are on there spewing their hate, their vitriol. They have not been fact-checked or banned that I can find. But us conservatives, we have had to put up with this. Big tech, big media, and the Democrats are never going to stop trying to silence us, but they don't realize we are going to fight back. And even though Mark Zuckerberg says that Facebook works more like a government than a company, they think these guys, they all think they're the gods of the Silicon Valley or the masters of the virtual universe. They are so brazen. This week, we even had Democrats in the House send letters to cable news providers and streaming services saying that they needed to shut down these conservative outlets like One America News and Newsmax and Fox News because they were giving differing opinions. They were guilty of robust, respectful political debate, giving two sides of the story. So they wanted to shut them down. See, they are pressuring media outlets to cancel conservatives. But I don't think you all are going to let them do this, are you? I think not. And I have to tell you, this is more than content moderation, which is what big tech likes to say they're doing. Just making certain people are polite. This is about controlling what you see, hear, and say, thereby what you think, and how you vote. The left is telling you to submit, or they will cancel you. Conform, or they will cancel you. Sounds a lot like communist China, doesn't it? The Chinese Communist Party during COVID, they locked people in their apartments. 
cut off their communication with others. Wouldn't let them travel around China, but you could go anywhere else in the world. China carrying out human rights violations against the Hong Kong freedom fighters, Tibet, Taiwan. They've got the Uyghurs in slave encampments, internment centers. Look at what they do with the economy to American innovators. They rob, replicate, replace. They steal your intellectual property, they create it themselves, and then they replace you in the marketplace, taking millions of American jobs. They're trying to steal the minds of our children and our college students with Confucius Institutes and classrooms. This is why we have to keep blocking Huawei, which is the spy network for big tech. They're trying to build a virtual you online. Thank goodness President Donald Trump understood China. He understood this, and he was standing up for the United States because China is trying to cancel the United States of America. China and big tech, they have a cozy relationship, and they have been allowing the Chinese Communist Party to spew all of their information. I can't find anywhere that they've been censored or blocked or banned. Big tech is aiding and abetting the Chinese Communist Party in their push for global dominance. And we are going to have to stand against it. So the question is, what are we going to do about it? And my question to you is, are you all ready to fight back against big tech, against big media, against censorship? Are you ready for the fight? All right, that's great. What we have is the virtual you protection agenda. Let's start with online privacy. Big tech, this is what we will say to big tech. You cannot track, follow, listen, data mine, or share your information, your information with a third party without getting your explicit consent. It is your privacy. When it comes to Section 230, and you've heard a lot about Section 230, haven't you? When it comes to censorship, they cannot come in and remove you, remove or block you or throttle you without telling you explicitly why. And to big tech, we say, we're going to take away from you these Section 230 provisions, and we're going to save them for little tech, the new entrance in the marketplace, so that we have choice and options. Dealing with China, means we have to bring our manufacturing back to the United States of America. We have to continue to support what President Trump was doing to hold China to account. We have to end these Confucius Institutes so that they cannot steal the minds of our college students and spread their soft propaganda. We have to continue to block Huawei. Thank goodness President Trump did that. And make certain that their spyware is not getting into your electronics and networks. And on the First Amendment, the First Amendment that is the most important amendment, it is we, the people, that are going to have to stand up and tell big tech and big media that enough is enough. We are going to have to tell them we will not stand for them to cancel conservatives. We will not stand for them shutting us down on social media. We will not stand for them ending conservative and religious TV programs music and entertainment that is enjoyed by, we know, at least 74 million hardworking, tax-paying Americans. So, it is going to be up to us 
to stand up for that First Amendment, to make the point that we, the people, treasure that right to worship as we please. We treasure that right to speak our mind and have an opinion. We treasure the ability to meet, to peaceably assemble, like we are doing here today. And we treasure our right to petition our government. And on that I will say, Nancy Pelosi, let's get the fencing and the wire down and away from the U.S. Capitol. You know, it is important that we have robust, respectful political debate. But in order to keep this in this country, in order for us to have the ability to defend the Constitution, to defend our rights, to vote for the candidate of our choice, it is imperative that we continue the work that we in the U.S. Senate started with President Donald Trump and that we stand up to China, that we stand up to big tech, and that we continue to protect the Constitution and all of our Bill of Rights. Are you with me? Are you, are you ready to go to work? All right, let's go fight to make certain we protect the Bill of Rights. Stand up for freedom. Thank you all. God bless you.